Welcome to Writers Are the Best Weirdos, the podcast starring me, Julia Roberts. I am a creativity coach, speaker, writer, and a weirdo. <laughs> Aren't you? We're going to answer a lot of questions about pubbing and promoting and marketing your books, so stay tuned. Hi, everybody. This is Julia Roberts, and we are here with the Writers Are the Best Weirdos podcast and virtual summit. I'm here with Paul Taubman today, and Paul is of Digital Maestro. Um, That's his company name. And he's the chief online strategist for Digital Maestro and has deep roots in technology as a creative problem solver, a master trainer, and an adjunct professor in computer programming. He's the master at teaching technical stuff to non-techies. And he takes the obscure, complex, and explains it in sort of a simple, fun, educational way. He's an international speaker, a presenter, he's had gobs of media, trainer, and focuses on website strategy and marketing online. Your stress levels will melt away after working with Paul as you take control of your website and turn it into a profit machine. Okay, thanks very much, Paul. Yeah, happy to be here. Always, always a good conversation with you. Oh, thanks. Yeah, you too. I, I, always, I just feel like this is just going to be fun for us. Now, Here's why I really wanted you to be with us on the um, Writers Are the Best Weirdos podcast, and that is writers, um, you know, want to write and everything, and they tend not to want to market. Uh. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. (laughs) But but whatever it is they're going to write, it's going to take a year, maybe even two years. And in that time frame, they might be able to build an audience that will ensure that this, this, this heartfelt thing that they're writing gets out into the world because the publisher will see that they have this big following and that they have, you know, writing online and that they're established as, as a, as a personality, actually. Does that seem true to you? Yeah. It's, it's not just a personality, but it's also as a brand, right. As a writer. Mm -hmm. And you think about the big, the big names out there. um, James Patterson, he's a brand. He's not just a writer. He's got everything that goes with it. Right. So that's, Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people cringe when you say brand. I'm just going to (laughs) say, and yet you're absolutely right because we have a brand, whether we create it or just, um, or just project it. Like there's a brand surrounding me. You already have a brand in your mind about who I am and vice Mm -hmm. versa. Right. So we have a brand, whether we control it or not. So go ahead. I think you can talk about brand safely, (laughs) but a lot of writers will reject that idea of being a brand, you know, but it is true. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, then think of it as a personality. Right, I think so. Right? Yeah. Your personality, who you are, the way people reflect or how you reflect to people is, that's also a brand, you know? Yeah. And so there's kind of crossover of terms um, when uh, we're talking yeah, about I'm things. Just, I was just reacting on behalf of some of our listeners. No, that's, that's good. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. because <laughs> Personally, when, I have a lot of marketing background. I understand that we're brands, but some people would just... Uh, maybe just because the creative personality, they don't want to be commodified as if they're a package of soap or something. But not that notwithstanding, let's hear some of what you think is a good idea for me as a writer who's got something that I'm going to finish in a couple of years. What might I be doing in the interim to make sure I project in a controlled or excellent sort of personality way? Yeah. So one thing that that came to me immediately when you were talking about, you know, as you're writing and you know, what you can do in that year or two to build things up. Um, so this is probably going to be something that people might not like. And personally, I don't like it. So okay. I'm going to use the words that are out there that people can recognize and then talk about how it's actually a good thing. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, we, and you're we like, might have to edge our way back in. <laughs> now you're wishing I told you what I was going to be talking about, right? Right, because I'm thinking, is it, a, is it, you know, dirty? Is it? No, 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 no. So, <laughs> So I'll just come out and say it. There's in the marketing world, there's this thing called hype, right? Hype. And priming the marketplace. So you all probably have seen some emails and some marketing where it's like, hey, this big product is coming out in a month. I'm not going to tell you anything about it now, but just stay tuned and check your emails, right? Mm-hmm. You've seen those kind of things. As a writer, I think that can also be sort of used to your advantage by letting people know, hey, this is something that's coming. Here's a project I'm working on. And you don't have to give them all the specifics because especially at the start, it's gonna be, the the end may be completely different, but involving people, letting them know that you're doing something um, 
is always intriguing, right? Yeah. It's almost like the cliffhangers on TV shows and, and series, right? They sure, always write in that, that come back next week because see what's going to happen to the hero or, or what's going to happen. So um, they might so prime. I Let's talk about priming for a minute. So you, if you don't want to sound like, um, you know, a box of Cheetos being released in 13 days, you could easily just consider it a conversation with people who care about your writing. And that is what you're doing. You're basically telling people who care about you and your writing what to expect and when to expect it, where you are, what's going on. You know, does that soften that or does that make it actually less effective? You tell me. I, th I think it's going to bring more of a connection mm -hmm. um, to people. If you think about people in the media and it doesn't matter or any industry, there are mm -hmm. people that you think and you find are very personable. Mm -hmm. You may have never met them at all, but you go, he seems like a really nice guy or wow, she is so, look at the way she treats people. Look how she's talking, mm -hmm. like doing those types of things either. And there's many different ways that you can do this, right? It could literally be writing about your journey and what you're doing, mm -hmm. um, being personable, uh, doing it in your own way. Like that's not a challenge. Just be yourself. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you'll, and you'll you attract the people who like you. You don't have yeah, to be personable it, the way somebody else is or funny the way someone else is. Just in whatever way you are, that'll find your people. Yeah. Yeah. You think? And, and you do you the best. Nobody can do you. And when you try to be somebody else, typically for most people, it's not going to work unless you're an actor or actress. I can remember my mother-in-law saying to me, you should be Rosie O'Donnell. And I'm like, that's taken. <laughs> Fisher sure someone has that job. But yes, only you can do you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what ways might we do that? How would we put out that messaging of who we are and what we're doing and why you should care? So there's lots of different outlets or, or platforms to do that, right? Um, just some things that come to mind. Number one, if you have a website, you can blog about it. Here's what's going on. Here's what I'm doing. Even here's how I'm feeling as a writer. I'm going through this and it's all that personal connection that's going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. So again, going back when you see interviews and think, uh, about people and what they say, the audience, whoever that is, me, you, other people, they're forming their opinion, right? Mm -hmm. And I think just on a sidetrack, the thing is people are always concerned. This is why they don't act themselves. They're always concerned of how they're going to be perceived. Right. Like, what are people going to think? And, the, and the, I think for me, the true answer is who cares, right? Because the right people will like what you're doing Right. And the wrong people will either be repelled or not, or they may just become intrigued. I mean, it's, so they're going to be intrigued or disinterested, but very few of them are just going to think, I hate you. I'm after you. <laughs> I'm right. after exactly. You. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, so you're just, and you are hoping to repel some people because your book has to find its little avenue. It can't, it can't, it's not going to be read by everybody. Right. Right. So it has to find its avenue. So you might as well just cut the wheat from the chaff and, you know, go for the chaff. <laughs> yeah. Focus on those who, who want you. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. Who want to see what you're doing. Yeah. Who care about how you write. That's the other thing is, especially if it's your first book, nobody knows your voice. Your blog will establish your voice, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, and when I start to understand your voice, I want to hear more of it, you know? So that's the other reason to put it out there because it's like, I love her blog. I can't wait for her book. And that is not even like a publishers love the numbers, but readers actually love the familiarity, the relationship, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, great. And that's why, you know, book signings are so, so big too, right? When people go, they want to meet the person that they've been following, that they've been learning about, that they've been connecting to. Mm -hmm. and that's that's mm -hmm. in-person types of things. Yeah, especially pre sort of, I mean, right, right now we do so many videos that people feel like they have met you, you know, so, but still, yes, people want to be there when something happens, you know, it's in the room where it happens kind of feeling, yeah, they do definitely want to show up and meet you and be with you. And the thing about a reading is sometimes you feel like, I know, but I've been at readings where there's 200 people. Oh, I can't get 200 people to come to a Barnes and Nobles. I've been at readings of my own book where I've had 20 people and ones with zero people 
for the two hours I sat there. So it is just, a, it's a crap shoot no matter what. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. and you know, sometimes those smaller turnouts are more intimate. Right. And those people that do show up will get even a stronger connection with you because, I mean, think about the one-on-one -on -one time that's possible when 10 people show up versus 200. Right. And the, they become mavens. They really, they turn around and uh, feel very connected to you and talk yeah. about you and talk about, wow, I was so lucky. I was one of 10. Raving fans. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Raving yeah. fans. Very good. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. So what, what outlets we, I keep interrupting you. Oh, that's okay. You, you mentioned you talk about blog. What else? Might you be? mentioned a good one video, right? A lot of people are doing video. A lot of people aren't doing video either. Yeah. And the videos that they're doing are not created to make that connection to talk about things, almost a self-reflection, um, talking to people. So I think, I think with social media, with a reel or, you know, a short, whatever people are doing, those are really short and they don't really get into the feelings that people are want to connect with by doing a, a longer video. And again, this could be put on your website. This could be on a YouTube channel. It's going to be out there so that people can, you know, it's a little bit more powerful, a little bit more connection than just a blog post, but it's certainly mm -hmm. something that can help um, to make the connection to get people to go, oh, I'm excited about what she's coming out with. Mm -hmm. right? I can't mm -hmm. wait. Do you watch videos online? I watch. Really yeah, I, really I do. Don't. I really don't. But but people do. I know they do. <laughs> No, YouTube like would TV. not be where it is if people right? were watching well, videos. TikTok, my God, it's only like three years old and it's already everywhere, everything. Mm -hmm. Insta reels, people watch those. Those are nice short things, 15 seconds, 30 seconds in the Insta reels. So those are a little bit easier to bite off maybe. But yeah, those are good. You know, those are good for kind of, the, well, because they're so short, like the glimpse. So imagine mm -hmm. if um, there's a upcoming author that you were following. And, and you see a, a quick glimpse of them going up, getting ready to sit down and do some writing. You know, here's my workspace. It's like, oh, look at that. I've got yeah, the same cool. candle on my desk, right? Or yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Her writing space is just a cozy little nook with, with a laptop and a chair or old school pencil and paper, right? Whatever mm -hmm. the method mm -hmm. is, it's mm -hmm. getting that glimpse and Again, it's those all little that. glimpses. So far, I, the reason I bring those up in in contrast to the hour long video or the forty five minute video is two. They both work in really good ways. The forty five minute video means you get to know me. You could even do a reading. You could do a reading from the from sure. something you've just read. I mean, written or something. So if you've got a polished seven minutes, you could do a seven minute reading. But um, but the so that one you really get to know me, and I really get to get my point of view across or my influence across. But a short one, it just is less um, preparation, less worry, less concern. You could just, like you said, this is my workspace. Oh, I'm sloppy, right? I am. You guys can't see. <laughs> but you see what it, so it, it's just less uh, daunting and it's easier to pick up. Maybe you do one of those a week, you know, for a little while and just get yourself in the habit first. Mm -hmm. And that also will keep you top of mind of your audience. Yes. Oh. Oh, Julia, she's publishing it. Let me go. Let me go check it out. Let me watch a video. You know what? I was thinking the opposite when you said that, and that is, you keep a presence of your readers in your in your mind, so that you know, ways. which is the other way. Yeah, like you are feel more connected to your readers. I think it impacts your writing, but it definitely impacts your um, your ability to sell your writing. You see, and so and that just the ability or the belief in the ability to sell your writing is going to enhance your confidence and, and better your writing. Mm -hmm. You know, it just is. I think a lot of people, oh, one of the reasons they write, but they write so hopelessly because, you know, it's a gatekeeper industry, you know, like somebody's like an agent going, Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you know, but on the one hand, on the other hand, it's extremely explosively different on the self pubbing. Mm -hmm. kind of so cool. So, okay, we talked about video, we talked about blogging. What about just, what would you do in social? What, what so is social can definitely point to some of those other platforms, to your blogging platform, right? So you're blogging on your website, you're putting uh, information there. Using social media is a great way to drive traffic back to your website. 
I like to think of uh, your website almost like a, a wagon wheel, mm -hmm. right? where your website is the hub. Mm -hmm. Are you picturing this? Doo -doo -doo -doo. I am, I am, I am. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. on that wagon wheel, you have spokes going out, right? Mm -hmm. The spokes, spoke goes to Twitter. This spoke goes to Pinterest. This spoke goes to Instagram. This spoke goes to right, all the social media outlets or even some of the video <laughs> platforms. And each one gives them that even a shorter glimpse of something and says, you want more information, right? Not necessarily using those words, but, you know, go check it out. And it gives them the link to your website. So by doing that, your website gets traffic. Or to the help. blog itself, the actual. Yep, to the, to the actual thing that you're blog. talking about yep. in there. Mm -hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. so if I'm, you know, you mentioned doing a reading, right? If I do a video of a, a reading of a couple chap uh, ch yeah, a couple chapters, a couple paragraphs, right? I might post that out on Instagram because that's where my audience lives and say, hey, you know, get ready to read a couple paragraphs or I'd love your thoughts on a couple paragraphs click yeah. here mm -hmm. right and that link goes back to that blog post specifically where that video is you don't want to send them to your home page because then they're going no, to have to yeah, go yeah. searching and they're going to miss it right but right. when it goes directly to that blog post with that video or or whatever content you're you're kind of talking about that's going mm -hmm. to be more effective yep oh no, i mean you, you're giving me a lot of ideas. Yeah. So <laughs> when you talked about, you know, doing a reading, this is really being vulnerable and it takes a high amount of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, chutzpah? What are you saying? Yeah, maybe it's chutzpah where you can, not that anybody's struggling when you're writing, not that anybody doubts if their writing is good, but sure imagine, they they imagine <laughs> if you were to say, you know what? I'm writing, I got these two paragraphs. I don't know. I'd love your feedback. Yeah, that was the one that really took me aback for a minute. Um, I could see doing that sort of as a contest or a game, but for me, my level of protectiveness would require that, that little fence. I couldn't just say, which do you think is good? <laughs> I just couldn't do it. It's just my own vulnerability. I could say, um, you know, give me feedback on this character name or this character name or this dog name or that. Dog yeah, name. that's, that's it, great too. I could make it a contest of sorts, not a contest, but you know what I'm saying? Like, or even just asking for feedback. Hey, what do you yeah. think? It what do is you th just, hey, what do you think? But I mean, I would have to make it as fun or funny as I could because that's a protective measure. I couldn't say I can't decide blah, blah, blah. What do you think? Because I love this one. It reminds me of my grandmother and I don't like this one, but it's perfect for the story. I, you know what I mean? I really couldn't get all my thoughts in there without feeling extremely exposed, I don't, you know, for me. Mm -hmm. um, but it's interesting. Yeah. But I do think that there's places or ways you could look for feedback. And of course, they feel very connected now to your work. In yeah. Different. When they have input, right? Mm -hmm. and, or, or they feel like they have that input where they're providing some insights to the rest of the process. Right. Holy or smokes. even they just were consulted, even if they didn't get input, but they were consulted. Mm -hmm. Right. I remember when she, I remember reading about this dog name, you know, or I remember being involved when this dog got named or when they're reading the book itself. Right. Or then you could, when the book's coming out, you could say, this dog was named on Facebook. You know, you could just come out and say, you said something along the lines of where your audience lives. Do you feel that you should pick one area where your audience is mostly conglomerated and the rest are, as you said, like wagon wheels spokes or something? One social? Yeah, so I think that that can be answered in kind of two ways, right? Yes and no. All right, <laughs> I'm, I'm good then, I got it. I don't want to offend anybody, so I'll say yes. So the, the thing is you have your current audience, right? Or mm -hmm. your target or uh, where if you've written before and people know you, they typically, have something similar about them right right so they hang out in certain places right and that may be uh let's just say demographic based they're more towards facebook they're scrollers right. on facebook right mm -hmm. so you can post on facebook because that's where people are now the more next me. that's where my people mostly are yeah mm -hmm. right so post away on facebook put those links back to the blog post, back to wherever you're, you're, you're talking about things, right? You, 
you can even go social media, social media. So you can be on Facebook and say, hey, embed or link to your YouTube video that you just talked about. Hey, I need a dog name, right? Whatever it mm -hmm. might be. So mm -hmm. you can certainly do that. The second part of that is who isn't looking for more readers, mm -hmm. right? So you may try, and the thing is, think of it as an experiment. Don't be worried about results. When you start posting on Twitter, who may not be your audience, right? right? It's another outlet. It's another possibility. You're extending your reach to new people. And the of course- about Twitter is anybody can read you. And so you could get retweeted by Anne Lamont, or you could be retweeted by J.K. Rowling or something, you know, that just, and all of a sudden you're in a very different, well, you yourself are um, complimented. Mm -hmm. um, my husband, when he gets retweeted by any great comic book guy, it's just like, oh, Julia, you know, he's in comics. <laughs> so <laughs> comics and mysteries and things. But at any rate, um, so there's that. You don't get discovered on Facebook very much because you're, in a closed loop, more or less. Yeah. Yep. The people that see you are your your people. You're they already there, them. right? They you're connected. They, yeah. Right. Um, we actually do a lot of social media work and strategy and management stuff. And people say, oh, you know, I really want to explode my brand. I go, great. How many, you know, we can post more on your on your places, on the platforms you're at. But you know what? If you've got 20 people following you, Chances are you're not going to get a whole lot more. You need to build that following first. Right? You can so boost in Facebook and Insta, right? You can boost yep. posts. You can I don't know that that's things. effective. Mm -hmm. You can advertise. Um, okay, so one of the disconnects I think some writers have, or maybe just me, um, is that you take Instagram or Pictionary and they're so graphic, we wonder what to post because yeah. we want to put five paragraphs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's our natural in, in, instinct would be to put like six paragraphs in this little teeny print in Instagram. So what would, how would you go about that? Like why, how or why would a writer use Insta or Pictionary? You mean Pinterest? I do mean Pinterest, but if you want to play Pictionary later. <laughs> we can do that, we can do that. No, I do mean Pinterest. <laughs> I'm like, okay. hmm, new platforms all the time. I'm good with that. So. The podcast will be back in less than a minute. Writers, does this ever happen to you? You can't write, though you try and try. Whoa! Writer's block just knocks you down. It doesn't have to be so fling and fling and hard. Join the Mighty Writers Club. We write together up to five days a week. We have a coaching and creativity training two times a month. You get your writing done in a community. We're with you all the way. Act now. Join us before you end up like her. Be mighty. The Mighty Writers Club. Find us at go.decodingcreativity.com slash mighty. And as writers you like to write. So it's right. just natural to just go on and on. This is where um, being succinct is important. Mm -hmm. And just kind of, you know, you want to think about those platforms as this is your lead in to get them to have what we call a call to action. Mm -hmm. right? That call to action is, you know, go check out here for more information. Right? Right. Read my blog, buy my book. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to think what other calls to action they might have come to my reading. Check so this these, out. Simple things like even out. check this out. Mm -hmm. um, the latest post is here. Go read it. So this succinct messaging and picture of even yourself, like people don't think about how they should inhabit their own Insta and their own, even their blogs. I don't inhabit my blog facially. I do, you know, my voice is there and everything, but I just use pictures. But probably more then you realize you should use your own pictures or your own writing space or your own backyard or your own, you're at a concert, you know, whatever your image, your life images are. Yeah. So this is where I'm going to go back to what we talked about before personality versus brand. Right. When as a writer, you certainly are more of a, think of it if, as a personality, it's about you, your picture, 
your images, you're doing things, right? So you should be all over that. Right, and I think we don't think of that. We want our book to sell us, but I think that's naive, right? There's three books on the shelf with the same name. You pick it up for the author. And there are mm -hmm. books with the same name. I'm just saying, you know, there's three books on the book on the shelf called Writer's Block. You don't care about all of them. You care about the one that you came to get based mm -hmm. on the author, right? Mm -hmm. And the more that connection that's there, the easier it is to go, yep, I'm not even gonna look at the other ones. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I have this book called Writer's Block. That's why it came to mind. Can you believe this book? It's from the 80s, but it's all like prompts. <laughs> anyway, but somebody gave it to me used for Christmas. But anyway, so, you know, like, yeah, I agree. It's all about like the author, the personality, the connection mostly, but you can't connect with, unless I'm a model or I can't think of what else you might connect without the personality very i mean you need the personality to connect to and that is also your book's going to have loads of your personality in it mm -hmm. so that's why that's why you want them to understand who you are before they try and read the mystery you wrote or the romance you wrote or the you know fiction novel you wrote because um you know because your point of your worldview is going to be in there even if it's just creeping in you know you're telling a story about fictional characters but your worldview is all over that's mm -hmm. why you create a world for your view. <laughs> anyway, yeah, okay. So cool, I like a lot of these ideas. So we talked about blog and video and a little bit of social and how to go about, or why to go about these um, image-based socials like Insta or Pinterest. <laughs> They're just little, does Pinterest actually have a lot of followings or do people go there? Yeah, so what'll happen is people go there, they'll, they'll look at something, they'll like it, and then they pin it. So that's a way of saying that they're going to hold on to it. Right. And the more, if they pin it and they hold on to it, as they're scrolling through that board, the more that, oh, yeah, there's, there's Julia. Oh, there. Oh. And what are they, what are they there looking for mostly? Like, why would I, why would they be, why would they come across me there? What are they looking for? So if they're looking for, um, you know, maybe it's romance novels. Maybe they're looking for a specific term um, in it. You know, for me, you know, it always intrigues me reading a local author because they're talking about my surroundings. I go, mm -hmm. well, you know, like the Sopranos. I, know where, I know where that is, right? Um, I know the Sopranos for that reason, like all the pizza shops and the sales, all those things are very local to us. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, so you know that, right? Sopranos is all North Jersey in that area. And I, I grew up close to that area. So I know where it is. Um, as opposed to, for me, and this is my personal opinion, uh, if you ever saw the Jersey Shore years ago on MTV, it was like, yeah. oh, this is what people from New Jersey are like. I'm like, this is a microcosm, right? And it's just, so. I don't know where they found those people. Were they from New Jersey even? No, but were. I agree with you. Microcosm, it sounds more like Staten Island people to me. But yeah. that being said, yes, I agree. It, didn't, it, was, it was a definitely disconnect for me. So if you say you're from New Jersey, people expect you to be down the shore. You know, <laughs> that's uh, that one person wasn't even from. She was from not even Philly. Philly could be considered the Jersey Shore. I mean, they're they're back and forth a lot. Yeah, they go there. Right? They go there a lot. Yeah. yeah, but still, she wasn't even Philly. She was just completely snooky, snooky, snooky. You can tell I'm a big fan. <laughs> but Sopranos. Well, regardless, is people will people will search for things like that or mm -hmm. certain topics that they're looking for and. That's how they I love um, Bosch now that I'm out here because it's all LA references yep. and that in the Valley and things like that. That's really fun for me because I live in the Valley. But at yeah, any rate. Uh, comedians in cars getting coffee. Have you seen that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that feels, fun. That blows that. I, I go so crazy when I'm watching that because he's driving in Manhattan at certain locate, like on the West side, the next thing he's all the way downtown. And then next day, I'm like, there, this is no driving me crazy. Hell, right? <laughs> and my wife is going, what is wrong with you? Right. Same in LA. Like he'll just be like driving on a like highway one, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. But the next thing you know, he's in traffic downtown. You're like two hours away. What? <laughs> like, like Some a helicopter picked up that little sports car, a vintage sports car that he rented for the show. It didn't, you know, <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. If, if you if you know the area, you're just like, that was not a drive. 
for celebrities to take with coffee in their hands, right? But um, it is fun. I like it a lot. So they might look for a location or a locale. Okay. Yeah, or or just a topic, something that you're interested in, or you know something specific like that. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing they do, um, but people use Pinterest for, but I never have, but I'm going to talk to somebody about it a little bit more, is when you use Pinterest to create your, your own pins, right? Of or ideas. Yeah, but it's your pins of the world your characters exhibit, live mm -hmm. in, or your characters. I, I cast my characters. I usually do it in a book, but other people would do it on Pinterest. But I cast my characters so that I continually describe them the same. You know, I don't always have to cast them famous. I can just cast them from an ad or something. But, mm -hmm. but that way I know who they look like and I, they inhabit something in my brain much faster. So I cast uh, my characters, but you can do that on Pinterest. A lot of people and definitely that. for their surroundings, their home, what their right? living room looks like, their uh, you know their outfits, the way that they dress. You can have certain mm -hmm. you know casual wear, formal wear. And the more real that all is to you, the more real it is to the reader because you're you're like aware of where she has to turn to go in or how that couch juts. You know what I'm saying? Like it's mm -hmm. you're much more in that space, and so therefore is your reader. So that's a cool thing. Use of uh, Pinterest that I haven't tried, but I know people use it that way. But anyway, mm -hmm. okay, but that's not usually for public consumption. That's usually a private use of Pinterest. That's yeah, that's I would call that part of your process. Right. So you wouldn't you wouldn't make that public. Or would so, you? So you know it's interesting again, depending on how open you want to be. You know, mm -hmm. there are some writers who are hush hush. There's some other writers who will be, you know, open up saying, here's what I'm thinking about, right? Here's and again. Here's a new character I'm based on, and you can have a board for that person with the different images in there. This is their their studio apartment downtown, and they're struggling. So it's you know kind of this is their lifestyle, and mm -hmm. really let people see it so that they're oh they're excited about it, right? Mm -hmm. Or they can you know be on board with that. Yeah, Austin Kleon has a book called um, Show Your Work which is pretty much that idea of just keep putting it out and, and engage people. Um, and I, I do think some writers are hush hush and I'm not sure. I, I think that's okay. You don't have to always be oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Everything there is, all the things I'm talking about, there's no right way. No, right. The no, right, right, way right way is your way and what you're comfortable with and what you like and, and what you feel. What you enjoy too, because if it's not enjoyable, you're not mm -hmm. going to do it. So you need to be able to, but you might not realize up front that you're going to enjoy it. That's for true. You think to yourself, oh my God, this is, oh, they want me to, you know, but you start doing it and the connections themselves really nurture more connections. And you feel really cool about it because like now you feel like, wow, I have people who care about this character who came up in my brain five years ago and I'm now I'm writing it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, uh, so um, I can remember even just the first time I put out a blog, I was extremely nervous, extremely nervous. And, um, you know, you push send and all of a sudden you get good feedback and you're just like, oh my gosh, that's like, that's so wonderful. That's like, you're so glad you took that risk. and so glad that you just pushed yourself to do it scared, you know, because you do get feedback and then you do have this connection. That's a really different, people always say to me things like, oh, but you have followers or you, and like, yeah, there was a time when I had a room with nothing in it, you know, Zero. <laughs> My yep. mom, and she was not reliable. <laughs> <laughs> so, my, <laughs> yeah, my first website that I was blogging, actually the first website I ever created was called All About Gratitude. It's still mm -hmm. out there. And if I dig back to the very beginning, um, I think, I don't even know what year, 20, 2000, I don't know what it was, long time ago. I remember yeah. there was one blog, blog post that I even wrote. Is anybody reading this? Like, I'm yeah. just writing. I don't know. I, like, sometimes people, people, people are funny, right? They'll people come. still feel that way. They'll come. They'll read it. They like it. And then they leave. Mm -hmm. I think, oh, if you just left a comment, that would be so encouraging, right? Very few comments anymore, though. Do you feel like it's, a, it's not really a comment world anymore that way? Well, I, I get think emails about things people like, and then they didn't comment on the blog. Love that one. <laughs> you know, That's I don't know. Yeah. I, I think with some of the social media platforms, people got so used to just going click to say thumbs up. I like this. 
click, right. click, and that's supposed to replace, you know, the actual typing out of sentences. Thank you very much for writing this. I really enjoyed what you had to say. I like the way you're developing this, and you know, I'm looking forward to it. Instead, it's just click like. Yeah, I mean, if I get anything that says thank you very much for this, I find it very interesting. It's going to be followed by I sell coach purses. <laughs> <laughs> in the well, yeah, I'm talking about the legitimate comments, <laughs> not the. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> but if I get a comment that starts with, this is very interesting, it's going to be followed by, I'm waiting for you for, you know, XXX, which is XXX material usually. But <laughs> so, I mean, I don't even think I have comments active. I have approval on my comments. Yeah. So uh, yeah. they don't. I think to. you have to these days. Yeah, you have to. Moderate, so it doesn't happen very often. Yeah. yeah. Moderate mm -hmm. your comments because otherwise okay. you will get all that. You will. And it'll just be sitting you there. You would not want to show your grandmother. <laughs> I don't have a grandmother anymore. <laughs> I still would not want to show it to her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't oh. know if I'm going to be a grandma myself sometime soon. Maybe. Not, not soon, soon. Nothing in the works. <laughs> anyway. All right. Well. I feel like we've covered a lot of territory. Is there something else you would like to point out or talk about that? I know you yourself help people build websites and help people master social media. How does that work? What kind of clients do you work with? And like, what do they get from that? Yeah, so with that, um, call it the WordPress Inner Circle Academy, soon to be renamed to the Maestro Academy cool. for digital maestro and really mm -hmm. what we do is we help people with their marketing with their mm -hmm. website um i know when you you remember you were your eyes were open for some of the things that were on your website that you had no idea about right right so that's like, the whole mm -hmm. idea is to empower people to build up their website and to turn it into something that can work for them I, um, I, like i was looking at all those tabs on the left of my wordpress and um you were saying you know what about this? But I never paid any attention to those. Didn't know what they did. What and you? I, I don't know if we figured that one out, but we did figure out a bunch of little things that I didn't know how to change. And I think a lot of us get something built, and then there is no other help. Then you just out. You're just out in open waters, going, "Well, this is my website until it's not." You know, because that's how much control I have. Yeah, I can blog. You mm -hmm. know, I can make changes to my any page, but. I don't remember what we were trying to change, but it was a it was a deep dive. <laughs> I think there were some things with your sliders. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's still so there were some. Working. Yeah, yeah. There were a couple of things that you you had going on where it's almost like having two antivirus programs on your computer. You think, oh, I'm going to be really safe when in fact that can actually cause some more problems than it's worth. Create their conflicts too. Yeah, yeah. create their more. conflicts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we help people with their website kind of on a technical basis like that and explain to them what to do and how to do it if they want to do it themselves. I call it open mic night, right? Because it's literally here are questions that people send in and we do it live. We answer them live and uh, fix problems. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's clients who just go, you know what? I just want my website to work. Can you handle it for us? And we go, yeah, right. sure. Mm -hmm. So we handle the management and the, the backups and the updates and all that techie kind of stuff and leave the, the content to clients. Mm -hmm. And then, but you do social stuff too. What do you do for social media? Yeah, with social media, we help clients with their social media strategy, mm -hmm. meaning, um, you know, it's not just about, oh, I got a whim, let me post something, right? Okay. We can strategically come up with what's best for you and your personality, how you handle things. Um, and we, again, just like the WordPress Inner Circle Academy, we have two different things. For people who like to do it themselves, we have a platform where you can go in and you can, you can put your posts to go to whatever, if you want Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and Instagram, right? What you pick the platforms that you wanna use, you can schedule those out so that they'll automatically go out on the date and time that you want. And then, all of the analytics, meaning, you know, which posts had engagement, which ones did people like, which ones people click on. You don't have to go to five different websites. You can see all that within our website, within mm -hmm. the dashboard mm -hmm. of that. So mm -hmm. you can do that, or we have a lot of clients just go, you know, I'm a writer. I'm too busy. I just want to write. Can mm -hmm. you come up with the content for us? And I go, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So I mean, we'll something that I think people don't necessarily realize is I'm a writer of books and then headlines and captions could just be really hard for me. And people who will write like advertising or headlines and captions, they're too catchy and, and brief to like get that flow of a, of a, of a chapter, for instance. Yeah. People have different um, areas of writing that they really excel at or enjoy. So yeah. yeah, I could see not wanting to do your social if it's just not how you personally converge. Um, mm -hmm. One of the main precepts of creativity that I teach is converge and diverge. I'm a really divergent thinker. I just go all over the place. And a convergent thinker is the kind of person who, well, creates by subtraction versus creates by addition. More is always more, less is more, you know? So a person who creates by subtraction in essence is really good at getting pithy and cramming a lot of information into those four or five words, you know? So, or a lot of insinuation or a lot of emotion or whatever it is, but they can make that work in seven words. Whereas right. a divergent person could write seven words a hundred times, but <laughs> <laughs> and maybe at the end of that process could find the squish up of that that becomes a caption. Some example, this and that, yeah. Maybe. I mean, we all do both, but you usually have one that you're really good at and the other kind of costs you money, costs you, you know? Yeah, really drains you. But <laughs> anyway, which do you think you are, a divergent or a convergent thinker? I think it depends on what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So when I'm writing blog posts, I'm thinking more about giving as much information that's pertinent as necessary. And those typically tend to be a lot longer then mm -hmm. when I'm thinking, all right, I've got this Facebook post. I just kind of want to get in and out with what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. get people to do something again, mm -hmm. be it go back to that blog post, be it sign up for a training, be it, or even, you know, sometimes it's just to, for that brand awareness, um, knowing which but one of those. Convergence, days. even in your long one, you said what's pertinent. That's a convergent thought. Like you're already narrowing what's what's going to go into that. So that's a convergence, but you do both. Everybody does both, but it sounds to me like your preference probably is convergence. Probably. If I, yeah. were, if I were to pick just one. In terms of a preference, we all do both. We can't not, you know, if you never converge, you couldn't show up on time or, you know what I mean? You'd never get to that point of 2 PM on Thursday. I said, yes, I'll be there. <laughs> and if you never diverged, you'd just be writing, you know, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy or whatever sentence you chose in your childhood for the rest of your life. <laughs> red rum. We're going to do a red rum moment. <laughs> well, we are coming up on the hour. So I um, just want to ask you where people can find you. And I want to thank you for being here because it's been a fun conversation. So where can people find you? So the website as you mentioned, is digitalmaestro.com. Okay. And we'll and, put that, you know, that'll be in the yep. in the notes. Uh-huh. The best place. And then for the WordPress Inner Circle Academy, it's just WP Site Help. WP Site Help. Okay. Um, I know you do the 100-day blogging challenge. Is that 100 Close. days? 30 it's, days? It's the ultimate blog challenge. Uh -huh. found at ultimateblogchallenge.com. And what we do is every quarter, it's just for one month. So it's a 30-day challenge where we inspire people to write every day mm -hmm. that month. Um, and people a lot of times go, I have no idea what to write about. Well, we provide right. a little... Uh, I'm going to tell you, I think that's brilliant because every writer can, can write to a prompt. And that's almost what you're giving them. You know, you're yeah. giving them a topic or a range of, of you know, thoughts or topics. And it's just, um, it just kind of takes the blank page away. You know, it makes it at least, okay, I'll just do this today. And then there's kind of a lot of community activity, right? Where people go and comment on each other's things. Which... Yeah, that's a, that's a big part of it is we have a private Facebook group uh, where mm -hmm. when you finish writing for the day, whatever time of the day that is, you go to the Facebook group, you post your link to that specific blog post, and then people will go read it and comment on it. So that's going to help almost like stepping into 2010 again, where people are commenting and there's an active blog or 2007 where yep. blogs actually were a conversation. It's almost like stepping back in time to when the blog becomes a conversation. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's, there's many reasons for the challenge. Um, 
You know, one is to help with that SEO, the search engine optimization by getting more traffic, right? That's okay. kind of on the technical side. The okay. other part is people just like, you know, we get a lot of um, people that rejoin every time and they just like the structure of knowing, okay, I'm going to get back into the habit of writing. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I have a community that's, that's what all I, doing yeah. the same thing. So mm -hmm. people post about their frustrations or, oh, I didn't get to do this today because, you know, I, I ran out of time because I had to, you know, my life got in the way and people are supportive. Don't worry, mm -hmm. you can, you know, catch up or just let There's it go one. by. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, I didn't, so I knew you did it more than once a year because it's just now ending for the, yeah. for this quarter. So it's quarterly, which is really cool. It is, especially if somebody is just beginning to blog, a great way to build up, you know, cat, um, posts so that you can mm -hmm. have things to refer people to and a great way to build this sense that when someone gets to your, gets to your blog, that you have a community already. Exactly. And when you're a writer and a publisher goes to your blog, that's something, not nothing, right? That really is. That's what, I mean, if you had a strategy in your head as to why to do social media, it would be for that agent who looks at, looks at your social. That's, you know, and can see numbers and can see responsiveness. And that's why, that's why your manuscript gets picked over another one that might be similar in quality or value. They see they can sell it. It's a business. It's you know? all about the marketing. Yep. If you have a built-in yeah. market to buy your book because you have 10,000 followers, you're definitely more appealing than somebody who's got six. Right. And the bottom line is, is if you've done it integrally, authentically, they are actually people who like you and who want your book. And what is, what is more rewarding to a writer than that? Someone who wants to read their writing, right? So I appreciate this time. Really good. I think we've really, you know, uh, sketched out a bunch of ways to go forward. I appreciate it. Great. Happy. Great. Me too. Right. Thanks very much. So this has been the Writers Are the Best Weirdos. I've been spending time with one of my favorite weirdos, Paul Taubman. I know he's got a good enough sense of humor that he doesn't mind that I said that. <laughs> all right. Talk to you all later. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Hey, thanks for listening. If you liked it, please subscribe and tell your friends. What did you learn today? What was your takeaway? What are you going to do today? Put it in the comments. We all want to know. Meanwhile, get my book. Write without the fight. You want to master your creative process so you can write with more ease and satisfaction. The links are all in the description box. Join us, because writers are the best weirdos. <laughs>